Hi, Pilot Mike, I'm back and I've got a treat for you today. So I've bought off uh, the X-Plane store the New York Scenery Pack, $22 in the sale. And basically this is it. So I've had a, a little bit of a play around with it, but the, the thing about it is it has so many buildings that are inside of this scenery pack that I was having real trouble managing to, to get a good frame rate on it. So um, if you play X-Plane a lot, you might realize that if you if you um, load up a jet, which travels really quickly, the frame rate drops and struggles a lot more than it does in, say, a smaller aircraft that, sl that flies slower. That's because it's got to build the scenery up at a quicker rate because of the speed of the jet is going. Um, so I found a plugin which makes an absolutely massive difference. And when I first loaded the New York scenery up in the Cessna 152 um, or 150, I think it is, I just couldn't play it. Basically, I could just about get through in about 15, 10 to 15 um, frames per second. And then it started to to drop. And then I loaded up a uh, excuse me, I loaded up a, a Eurofighter Typhoon and absolutely hopeless. Couldn't even get it off the ground. So I'll show you. Um, exactly how well this is performing in a small aircraft, what the plugin does, how to get this working, so that if you have bought the New York scenery, you can enjoy it. Um, and this is a little tip as well. So I'm actually parked on this industrial uh, shipping container yard or something. Now, one of the things about the New York skyline is if you load yourself up at uh, JFK, for example, that might be the first airport you think about that comes to mind. That's going to put you a long way away from the end of Manhattan. So if you go to flight configuration and load up um, this uh, uh, field here, KJ00, I don't even know if it's a real airfield. It doesn't have an airport name. It just is called J KJ00. Um, that is, that basically puts you right here, right, right at the action, right where the scenery is. So I don't know, maybe that's a shortcut from, um, from X-Plane. So if I jump into the cockpit, it's a bit weird. There is no runway, so we're just going to have to try and take off best we can. Um, so let's unpause it and get going. So let's put a stage of flaps down. You will see it being a little bit choppy. I'm getting what, 23, 24 frames per second. It's not brilliant. However, considering this is completely unplayable before, uh, to get 23, 24 frames per second is let's set the brakes off. Use my new rudder pedals. Let's get it back on track. Little bit of right rudder to compensate for the engine torque. Lifting the nose up, and we are airborne. And it is flyable, basically. 24 frames per second at the moment as we're going over the uh, some of the buildings. What I'll do, I'll take it higher and I'll show you why it's able to achieve this frame rate. So uh, let's put the flaps in now that we've got about 200 feet. Again, didn't set the altimeter, but I know we're at uh, 200 feet more than what the altimeter is currently saying. Ellis Island. The, the new trade center. Statue of Liberty! Just going underneath the wing strut and there it is. Awesome. I am banking to the left. <laughs> okay, got enough height there. Got to try and level it off and uh, pull a bit of the throttle back and trim for that. So, here we are, New York, 23, 24 frames per second. I have the 
I'll show you the settings that I have and then I will show you exactly what plugin I'm using to um, to achieve this and I'll put it into the in the description below this video if you want to just skip straight to that so the settings are uh, number of world objects high. Now I find this is what makes the big difference to frame rate. If I drop that very, uh, if I drop that right down, I would get uh, a much much higher frame rate. Texture quality I don't find makes that much of a difference. Anti aliasing makes a huge difference. Visual effects, no, nah, it doesn't really make that much of a difference to be honest. Um, I've got it set to medium here. I probably could put that up a bit. I might lose a couple of frames a second if I did that, but the number of world objects is what makes the massive difference for my system at least. Um, so, how is it achievable? What's happening? Basically, if I pause it here uh, and jump out the cockpit and go a little bit higher, you can see in the distance over here some brown smog. Got my carburetor ice in there turn that off again I really need to figure out why that's coming up um going higher and higher so brown smog over here now it is far in the distance and you don't really notice it but what that is doing is it's it's uh, reducing the draw rate so it's not drawing any buildings or any scenery at this point here and I quite like the effect it just looks like a bit of fog on the ground really but um the only scenery that's getting drawn is literally within this this uh, circumference here all of this so the the um the hardware is able to draw buildings at high density i mean i could knock them down and probably get 30 maybe even 40 frames per second if i took it down to um to low or um uh, minimal buildings but to have high buildings to prove a point that it is just about flyable with 24 frames per second not great but it is doable um Purely because it's not drawing the the um, it's not drawing the the scenery at that that level. So what I'll do is I will uh, I'll jump into a jet and show you that it's just because of this uh, this special plugin in the Lua script that is able to do this. You can even fly through on a jet, which previously I just it just would not load at all. I had to force quit X plane the second it loaded up when I loaded the New York scenery in a Eurofighter Typhoon. So I'll pause here, jump into Eurofighter Typhoon, take off and show you how well it performs with this plugin. Right, here we are. The uh, Eurofighter Typhoon also gets in 24 frames per second. We'll unpause it. We'll take the brakes off. We will put one stage flaps down. We'll put full power and uh, let's get this bad boy off the ground. It was here at this very point where it completely crashed last time before I had the plug-in. Just could not handle it. One frame per second had to force quit X-Plane. This time? Okay, I'm getting what? 17 frames per second there? So that it is a little bit less. But it's only dropped... Um, few frames if I oh I need to set the gear up I need to put the flaps up always has a little bit of stutter when I take the gear up but there we go 17 frames per second so seven frames per second less in a much 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 faster jet I don't think that's bad I don't think that's bad at all 19 frames per second I'll get to the end of Central Park I'll do a 180. Oh, there we go. Now it's starting to try and draw the scenery that's further ahead. So that's a problem in any fast aircraft at low level. Especially when you've got this many buildings. Okay, now it's really starting to struggle. So, lesson there is, if you stay within the confounds of, or the confines of the... Uh, Of what it's already drawn, you're okay. Go outside of those confines, and yeah, this is this is. I'm gonna have to uh, pause that. So that that's exactly what was happening right from the off before I had that plugin um, installed. Having this plugin 
so as if you just stick within the immediate draw limit you're okay in a jet um, it works perfectly fine for a small smaller um, smaller aircraft with a well basically with less speed because it doesn't have to draw things out as quickly I've got a feeling if I try and do this 180 turn, it's going to have to redraw the scenery behind me and it's going to stutter and get down to a low frame rate again. I'll just give it one more chance. Come on, come on, you can do it. You also notice a brown haze a lot more in a, in a jet like this because I think it turns on after 2,000 feet, so I'm obviously a lot higher than I was before. There you go, that's, that's quite good. That'll show you the brown haze that you get in. Where is my mouse? There. So there's your limitations, so that's how it's working. Boom, there we go, just jumped right into view right there. I guess that was already preloaded, so it wasn't too bad. If I start, if I want to do a long distance um, flight in this jet, with this kind of scenery at low level, it's going to have problems, it's going to have to keep loading, loading the scenery. So, I'll show you the plugin and how uh, how you can get this plugin working on your system. Now, I think that's great. I mean, I would be flying, if I was going to fly over New York, I'd want to be in a slower aircraft anyway to enjoy the scenery. I wouldn't be wanting to be tearing around in a, in a uh, Eurofighter or some kind of military jet, that's for sure. Right, let's go. So, this is, um, this is where it's held, actually. I just come right back out there and start from... This is the X-Plane folder and you go to resources and then into uh, plugins and you need something called fly with lua so you you can go download fly with lua i'll put a link to where you can uh, get that in the in the um, description box below this video uh, download fly with lua just drop it into your plugins and resources and then what you get is this folder called scripts and what you're going to need to do is uh, you can put different scripts into here and this plugin works uh, and runs these scripts. I'm sorry, I don't know the technicals of it. I just know you just have to get the Fly With Lua folder, put it in that location, and then you can find scripts such as this one here. So this is where, um, this is the actual script I'm running for the performance boost. I'll put a link to this in the description below the video too. And you get three versions. You get high performance ultra with shadow, High performance ultra without shadow, and the one I'm currently using at the moment, high performance low without uh, shadows. So I haven't tried the other two. I've just jumped straight for the low just to see how much of a difference it could make. Um, download the file, extract it. You just, it's just one simple bit of script, and it's basically you could probably change this even if you went into it in uh, into text and and change that to maybe three thousand, four thousand, however you would want it to uh, where its limit would be. Basically, yeah, just drop that into um, into Lua scripts and load up X-Plane. So you've got to drop it in. You've got to quit X-Plane completely, drop it in, load up X-Plane right from the start, uh, load up your, your flight. And then if you rise above 2,000 feet, you should see the, uh, the haze and the fog. And then you know that basically it's limiting its, its draw length at 2,000 feet and, and a certain distance. What was that 10,000 or something, was it? Visibility 10,000. So I guess you can adjust it if you wanted to just go in and change, change it by text, which would be something like, uh, you could probably open that as a text file and then um, go into it, open with... Uh, okay, what I would do is just change that to .txt. And then uh, open the script up. In fact, let's do it now. Why not? TXT. There you go. And probably change it there and the height there. 
Oh, it's got it's got a few different um, variables in here that you could change and tweak about if you so wish. Let's change that back to the Lua script. And let's jump back into the cockpit. See, it is working perfectly fine now. As long as I stay within the confines of what it's already drawn in this jet, it's fine. If you're using a helicopter, slower aircraft, I'm sure you'd have loads of fun with it. So that's what you do if you have downloaded a scenery pack like the New York scenery and um, you can't get it to run. I highly recommend that, that performance boost and then and then um, happy flying basically happy flying around New York I'm Pilot Mike let me know if there's any other plugins or anything that I should check out for X-Plane and finding it's loads of fun putting in extra plugins and, and tweaking it about and things like that